In this video, we're going to be talking about how to evaluate all the machine learning models that we've been learning about thus far. So many of the previous videos have been about how to run certain machine learning models, how they work, the certain intricacies about them, but what comes after that? So you've made your predictions about your unknown data points, but how do you know how good of a job you've done? It might seem obvious to you, you might say, oh, I just take how many I got correct divided by how many guesses I made and that's my metric, right? That should be enough. Well, that is one possible metric you can use and it's called accuracy. But we'll see why that's not always the best metric you wanna use, or at least it's not the only metric you wanna to calculate to see how good of a job you've done. So we're gonna be using the same type of framework we used in previous videos about, we're trying to classify some mystery fish as either a salmon or a tuna. And let's say that we've run whatever machine learning algorithm that we want to run, and these are our results. So this type of matrix right here, where we have our actual labels on the left and we have our predicted labels up here on the top, is called a confusion matrix. And it basically just tells us uh, how many things we got correct out of each category that we predicted. So let's get a little bit familiar with this matrix before looking at the different metrics we'll use. Uh, so S is salmon, T is tuna. For example, this five right here says that there was five cases where the mystery fish was actually a salmon, but I predicted it to be a tuna. So I was wrong here. This is also a wrong situation. It's just the other way where the mystery fish was actually a tuna, but I predicted it to be a salmon. Um, in uh, opposition, we have this three here, which is a correct guess. We're saying here that there was three cases where it was actually a tuna and we predicted it to be a tuna, okay? So one thing to note right here is that we had many, many more salmon than tuna. So we had, it seems like 180 salmon, 175 plus five. So there's 180 actual salmon and 20 actual tuna, okay? So let's go ahead and calculate that seemingly obvious accuracy metric, right? So accuracy simply measures how many correct guesses I made out of how many total guesses I made. So correct would be this 175, which is predicting salmon and it's actually a salmon, plus this three, predicting tuna and it's actually a tuna. So I get 178 correct guesses. Out of how many total guesses, if you add all this up, this 180 and 20, it's 200. So our accuracy comes out to, it turns out, something like 89%. So it seems pretty good, right? We're getting a really high accuracy. So what's the problem? Well, here's the issue. Let's say that our whole goal here was to correctly predict tuna because let's say in our area they're going um, extinct and we want to make sure to catch every tuna um, and not miss any with our prediction algorithm. So let's see if we're doing a good job if that's our goal. A new metric that we uh, will introduce here is called precision. Precision is given by out of all the guesses you make for your target class, how many did you get correct? So since our target class here is tuna, we go ahead and look at this column. So we made eight total guesses for tuna, right? Five and three. Out of those eight, how many did we get correct? Only three of them. So our precision is three out of eight. To just repeat myself to make sure this sinks in, this precision is out of all the ones where I guessed it was a tuna, how many did I actually get it correct right on the mark? So three out of eight, that comes out to about 38%, right? So not looking as good as that 89 anymore. Um, really not looking very good at all. Now let's look at a different metric also called recall. Recall measures a slightly different thing with a different notion. Recall measures out of all the things that were actually tuna, how many did I catch as tuna? So that's subtly different because now we're looking at this row of things actually being tuna. So out of these 20 fish that were actually tuna, how many did I correctly classify as tuna? It turns out I got only three of them. So that would be three out of 20, which is a measly 15%. So our recall is very, very, very low. Our precision is also rather low, but our accuracy is high. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't looking at accuracy by itself, we wouldn't know the full story. We need to look at pre, uh, precision and recall as well to see how good of a job we're doing. Now, you might be asking, oh, there's so many metrics. How do I know which one to use? Well, the answer is it depends. It depends on what's your goal. If you have different goals, different uh, of these metrics are going to be important. 
just to give a quick um, introduction to a couple uh, real life scenarios. If you're trying to, for example, predict students at risk of dropping out of your college or your high school or something, you probably really care about recall because you care about of all the students that are going to drop out, I want to make sure that I catch a very high percentage of them, which means that I want a very, very high recall. It's okay if my precision is not so high in that case, because if my precision is low, I potentially catch a bunch of students who weren't going to drop out, but it doesn't really hurt me to um, try to give them resources either way. Now, a case where precision might be more important is if I'm trying to select students at my school um, to represent the whole school in some national competition. Um, I want to make sure that whatever method I'm using to uh, pick students who are very qualified to represent the school, I'm picking only qualified students. Um, it's okay if my recall is not that high, which means that I'm not picking all qualified students. I just care that of all the students I pick, a big percentage of them, a big precision, uh, are qualified to represent the school. So those are just two cases where precision might be more important or recall might be more important. Um, of course, they both are pretty important. So how do we combine both of them? And before I go into what the F1 score is, there's a way to game both of these met, uh, metrics. For example, I can make a recall 100% if I just classify everything as a tuna. So all I do is every time a mystery fish comes, I say tuna, tuna, tuna. That means that I'm going to catch all the tuna because I definitely classified everything as a tuna. So my recall will be 100%. My precision probably is going to suck because... I um, classified a bunch of things as a tuna that were not a tuna at all. A way to game the precision metric uh, would be basically if you only classify something as a tuna, if you're really, 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 really sure, if you're like almost 100% sure, in that case, you're going to have a very high precision because you don't make many guesses at all, but you're probably going to have a bad recall because you didn't catch a lot of things that were a tuna because they weren't strongly tuna enough for you. So how do we kind of... Uh, fix that so that we can't game the system. We calculate something called a F1 score, which is simply just 2 times precision times recall over precision plus recall. If you know what a harmonic mean is, this is just the harmonic mean of precision and recall. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. But this basically just captures both metrics so that you're trying to maximize the F1 score. You need to maximize both precision and recall to some extent. Okay. So this video was just mostly the point I want to get across is that accuracy is not the end-all be-all metric. Here we saw our accuracy was high, but our precision and recall were uh, considerably lower. So basically look at your problem situation in the context of everything and think about which of these metrics is really important to you and try to maximize that one. Okay, so until next time.